John here guys and today we're talking about the Tyrannus X9 Lite Pro. That's right, this is the latest edition of this new radio put out by Tyrannus and it has a few welcome features that were absent in the initial release of this radio. But does it have all of the features to truly be able to call this the pro version of the X Lite? And is this a release by Tyrannus or not? Because this is an FR Sky URAV collaboration. So, what is this thing? Well, the most notable features that are included in this release of the X9 Lite are the inclusion of Hall sensor gimbals. Now you'll notice these are not the sticks that come on this radio. It comes with these pokey little things that are basically miniature medieval torture devices for your thumbs. I'm gonna get medieval on your ass. If you are a thumber, you must get rid of these because I tend to rest my thumbs um, and kind of put some a little bit of weight on that stick and this is just extremely uncomfortable after about 20 to 30 minutes of flying on Velocidrone My thumbs are already getting torn up Yeah, that sounds like kind of a silly thing to say and I'm whining like a little baby hey, that really hurt. But look at how jagged and sharp these are. I mean these are basically, you know, these could be used as surgical implements That's how sharp that they are um, I'm guessing for something thin like this is perfect for a pincher, but for a thumber, it is dumber. So what I've done is I found these little stick nubby things on Thingiverse, printed myself a set out and put them on there, and now it feels quite good. Now, the other notable, the other notable item that is different about this radio compared to the original release is it comes with this really cool color. Now, I'm not sure if this is the same colorway that was available on the original one or if this is slightly different. I do like that this appears to be almost like a miniature Mr. Steel version of the larger X9D. Uh, the color is quite handsome indeed. It doesn't have the little mustache signature logo that the that, that one has. Um, the other thing it has is it comes shipped with the updated firmware needed for you to be able to bind this directly to an XM Plus receiver. That is the most popular receiver that FR Sky makes. The reason being that it is plenty good for plenty of ranges. It has dual antennas and it costs about $12 to $13. That is the best bang for the budget there. Now it is still plagued with this tiny module bay. This is not a full JR module bay, so you have to use one of the FR Sky things on there and of course this one is still plagued uh, you can see emblazoned on there the asus access access asus i don't know the access protocol this is the worst thing one of the worst things that have plagued fpv in many years if you want a quick summary of what the access protocol is it is fr sky's money grab at coming out with a new communication protocol standard that is proprietary to lock other companies out so that they cannot make FR Sky um, receivers. Now that in itself is not terrible. It may have some features. People may want to buy those. That's totally fine. But the releases that have come out with this new protocol that have the access feature on board are locked out from the previous versions meaning that you had to update your firmware in order to be able to talk to a D16 receiver like the XM Plus, which I talked about in the last review. This one comes shipped with that update, but what is still lacking is the ability to connect to a D8 receiver. Now, why that's notable is a D8 receiver is what you're gonna find on any micro class quad, any whoop, any <laughs> anything by beta FPV, anything by i mean it's just the standard d8 are what they go on the little tiny ones you remember that four inch baby hawk r that i reviewed the other day that has a beautifully small d8 receiver meaning when i went to try to i was going to actually try to do some testing with this radio on that quad and it's not compatible and as of today there is no firmware update that you can do to make it work so how can you recommend this to somebody starting out or even somebody in the hobby, I have to fly those micros on this channel. So this cannot be my only radio. 
Now, I also have the QX7S. This has been my main radio for the last few years. Um, it's a little bit more premium feeling. It has that carbon look shell on there. And if you see the gimbals on there, these are much more comfortable for a thumber. Now the QX7S is essentially the pro equivalent. Comes with hall sensor gimbals. It comes with uh, this nicer case, comes with a battery and a charger. The other thing it comes with is this case. And this case is proven, even though it's a little bit large, it's proven invaluable to be able to move my gear around. This one comes with no case, which if you're gonna call it pro, I really wish that it did. Now, aside from not being able to work with D8, um, this is a really good remote, a really good transmitter. It feels perfect in my hands. I really like that the gimbal spacing is a little bit closer together than the QX7 series. Um, the gimbal throw is a little bit shorter, but not super tiny. It's still plenty of range of motion to get precise stick movements. I love the inclusion of the Hall Sensor gimbals and the price point for this is still right around a hundred bucks. Now note, this does use 18650 batteries, so you will need an 18650 charger like that, but if you're an FPV, that is pretty much a standard. You're gonna need that for a lot of different accessories. You can use that for your Fat Shark goggles. So I would go ahead and suggest, if you don't already own one of these, buy yourself a charger, buy yourself probably four or six of these 18650 cells that will work on here. They go in the back just like this. And so bottom line, there is still a few things missing. Now there is an available charger piece that you can open up the radio, solder it in, and include this little URUAV accessory. You have to solder, I believe, four wires on the board of this, which is a little nerve wracking. But if you do that, you can then charge via the micro USB port. And to me, that is a glaring omission. Now they had that chip available for purchase around the same time that this was available. If they really wanted to call it the pro version, they really should have included that in there. It would have been a first, not really a first, but it would have been so awesome to not have to take these 18650 batteries out to charge this thing. I do like that they are finally using micro USB and that is the cable that you also use to play your simulator on it. I kind of wish that it would have been on the top so that you know, it doesn't, the, the cable for your simulator doesn't have to rest under your hand. Uh, that would have been nice, but they didn't do it. So who is this for? If you are a racer or a freestyler that doesn't need to have to fly the micros or you have the full size QX7 or the X9D and you want a second radio for more, a little bit more portable when you're gonna be out on the road. The thing is the portability really goes with micros. So why FR Sky, why are you locking us out of D8? You know, and let's just talk real for a second. But if I can be real about it. Be real, son. Real, be real, real, son. The access protocol is an abomination and it is a front to everyone who flies FPV. The access protocol is equivalent to EA's terrible, awful, greedy, grab for money that they are making with microtransactions and the community is really rejecting them over their abuse of their customers. Why aren't we doing the same thing with FR Sky? Yes, this was sent to me for review. Yes, I may never get an FR Sky product ever again for speaking like this, but it's absolutely true. Release D8 compatibility for this radio. I've had this radio for over a month. I didn't make a video because I wanted to wait and see if FR Sky was gonna do the right thing and release the compatibility, but they haven't. And it doesn't look like they have any intention to. So they're just making themselves backwards compatible or <laughs> a not backwards compatible, meaning that you have to buy one of their access receivers and install it on a Whoop. It doesn't even make any sense. It's just a terrible money graph. Whoever is advising them on this, you're really squandering whatever little goodwill that you have left with the community. Now, TBS is right around the corner of releasing their Tango 2. Jumper is putting out, has put out the T16, which is 
you know, on all accounts been a phenomenal option. And they just put out one with Hall Sensor Gimbals. Keep in mind that's quite a bit more expensive than this. But if this had D8, this would be a hard recommend for anybody getting in the hobby or anybody that wanted a second radio or anybody that wanted a smaller radio or anybody that wanted to try something to be a little more comfortable in the hand, but it doesn't have it. So who can I recommend this to? I don't know. You decide if it's for you. I'm not even going to tell you this. Thanks, guys.